Hello everyone, this is a video that explains the stackable job demo and in case you haven't uh, seen it yet I'm just gonna quickly play the video, it's only 10 seconds So as you can see in the video we dropped a stack of three balls a yoga ball and a basketball on the top and tennis ball on the very top from the staircase then after rebound the tennis ball went up to as high as the ceiling right so a lot greater uh, than the initial dropping height so let's talk about why and uh, how this is related to the formation of the supernova Okay. In fact, a simple demo like this has the same mechanism as the explosion of a supernova. So it's actually pretty cool. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so let me first uh, draw the diagram. So here's the three balls we dropped. One, two, three. And let's say we drop them from a one meter high. And I'm exaggerating the size of the ball in this case. Okay. Uh, so the actual size of the ball uh, should be negligible to the height. And in theory, after rebound, so we drop them, and after rebound, the tennis ball on the top should be able to go up to a height that's 49 meters quite impressive right and in the video it's a loss uh, it's a lot less uh, like lower than that uh, due to a couple of reasons uh, apparently there's air resistance and there's momentum loss during clearing and um, this is in theory uh, if you stack three balls together and drop them from a certain height and the ball on the top can go up to 49 times of the original dropping height so we're gonna to look at uh, this from a theoretical pers perspective why uh, after rebound the ball on the top can go up that high okay. Like any theory, uh, we need to have uh, some assumptions, okay? So, so the theory is going to be built on the assumptions. And the first assumptions we're going to have is, say, it has to be elastic clearing. So we have to assume this is elastic laden. Okay. Uh, and what is elastic laden? Uh, so during elastic clearing, both momentum and energy is conserved. Conserved means uh, before and after the clearing, uh, the momentum and energy stay the same. Don't change. Okay. So second of all, Second assumption we have is the ball underneath is a lot heavier than the ball on top of it. Okay, so based on those two assumptions, and uh, we'll have the following uh, derivation derivations. Okay, all right. So let me draw a line. We're gonna start the derivation. And for elastic clearing, there is a rule uh, you should know. So it is for elastic clearing, the magnitude of the relative velocity between the two objects stays 
stay the same. Oh, clearing. Before and after clearing. Uh, this is something we're just gonna use uh, for this video. And as for why and how to prove it, uh, it's actually in part three of this uh, series, uh, series of video. And I'm gonna put a link below, okay? Proving in part three. And uh, just by looking at this, you may be confused. What does it mean by the magnitude of the relative velocity between the two objects stay the same before and after clearing. So let me show you an example. So let's say you have a ball going to the right with the velocity v. Let's call this ball one. And you have an identical ball, ball two, going to the left at uh, a speed of me as well. So this is a buffer clearing. And after clearing, ball one, change direction, maintain the same speed, going to the left, ball two, going to the right. And let's take a look at uh, the, the relative velocity before and after clearing. So let's say v to 1 is the relative velocity of v2 to v1, and it's equal to v2 minus v1. And if we assume the positive direction to the right, then v2 is going to be negative v, right? Speed is v. And since it's in the negative direction, it's going to be negative v. And v1 is going to be positive v, so I minus positive v. And I ended up with negative 2v. And let's take a look at the magnitude of v to 1. It's equal to 2v. Right? Just put, uh, put the absolute value around it. Then we can turn this into a positive 2v. And uh, let's look at the v to 1 after, v to 1, after it's equal to v2 minus v1, v2 now is positive v minus v1 is actually negative v, because it's in the negative direction now, v being the magnitude, okay? So the negative considers the direction, in the negative direction. Anyway, uh, 2 minus make a positive, so we have v plus v equals to 2v. So the magnitude of v to 1 is equal to 2v. Okay. So this is what this means by the magnitude of the relative velocity between the two objects stay the same. You can see the magnitude of the relative velocity is the same. In this example, it's all 2v. Okay? Uh, we use the v to 1. v1 to is the same thing. You get uh, uh, 2v as well. Okay. So, now we are able to explain the stacked ball. So, uh, Let's say this is a ground, and uh, we drop, let's use two balls for now, as an example. Drop two balls from a height h. And uh, by the way, you can tell I'm using the size of the ball to uh, be an indicator of the mass of the ball, right? So the bigger the size, the heavier the ball is. Uh, but in, in reality, 
it's all about uh, the 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 mass, right? The uh, the they they don't have to have um, like difference in volume. Like one doesn't have to be bigger than the other one, as as long as one is heavier than the other one. Okay, but uh, I'm showing you more visually. If it's bigger, it means it's heavier. Okay, and um, let's define again positive direction here. Let's say after the ball is dropped, right before they hit the ground, they both have a speed of V. So the small ball and the heavier ball both has a speed of V. And this is right before clearing. So the clearing between the heavier ball, the ball on the bottom, and the ground, this clearing will happen first, before this clearing happens, right? So let's take a look at this, this clearing first. Um, before this clearing, the relative velocity between the, the ball and the ground is negative V, and the ground has a speed of zero, so minus zero which is negative V and absolute value give us V. Okay. And uh, after clearing, say after clearing, so we have to think about what uh, does the speed of this ball become? The one on the top still has a speed of v going downwards because this collision hasn't happened yet and we're just gonna look at uh, this collision uh, right after the collision the the ball on the bottom its speed is gonna change to v and it's going upwards now why is that because Remember, the magnitude of the relative velocity has to stay the same, right? The ground is not moving, right? So you can think of it as uh, the speed is still zero. So V relative is equal to, if this speed V and the direction is the upwards, then you have relative velocity being V minus zero equals to V. And this works, right? So the absolute value doesn't change. And because ground is really heavy, uh, its, its speed change is almost uh, zero. So you can think of it as not moving at all during the collision. And then we derived after the first collision here, the ball on the bottom will have a speed of V and will now start going up. So it has a velocity V upwards. All right, now the second collision is going to happen between the ball on the top and this heavier ball on the bottom. And again, let's calculate, uh, calculate the V relative before and after collision. Uh, before collision, V relative it's equal to, and let's just put the absolute value around it. It's equal to absolute value. This is negative V minus V. It's equal to two V positive uh, two V. So this is the relative uh, magnitude of the relative velocity before the collision of the two balls and after collision. Again, because the ball on the bottom is very heavier, its velocity almost doesn't change. Now, this is like a ground to the ball on the top. Right? During this collision, the, the ball being the much heavier one, the, this velocity doesn't change. And you may ask, how heavier does it have to be? Uh, I can tell you it can be shown that if the ball is 200 times heavier, then the speed change is only 1%, right? 
right? So if this ball is 200 times heavier than that, this speed will become 0 0.99 uh, V, okay? And if it's a, like for example, a thousand or 2000 heavier than the ball on the top, then the speed almost doesn't change. Can be a, approximately just V, okay? Um, so this is why one of our assumption is when you stack those balls, the, the one below has to be a lot heavier than the one above. Okay. And uh, since this is V, what does the speed have to be here so that their V relative magnitude equals to 2V? You can think about it. I'll tell you the answer. Now this has to be 3V. Okay, can you understand that? Because if this 3V, 3V minus V, and you get 2V, right? So now we just derived, after the collisions, uh, the, the collision between the ball on the bottom and the ground, and the collision between the uh, ball on the bottom and the ball on the top, the one on the top gained a speed three times of the original speed before collision. Okay. Uh, what does it tell you about the height? So if you recall, height is actually uh, in proportion with speed squared. Okay. Uh, if you don't understand this, you can think about um, if you drop a ball from a height and how is potential energy and kinetic energy related. Okay. You drop a ball from a height. Uh, this height is mgh. Right. And after ball, the ball hit the ground, it has a kinetic energy of a half mv squared. And mgh is equal to a half mv squared because the conservation of uh, mechanical energy. And you can see this h and v squared are in proportion. Okay. You can also get it from uh, kinematics equations. 2ad. And if vi is 0, you get the same thing, right? So this v squared and d uh, could be the height is in, pro, uh, in proportion. So that means if V is three times and then when you square it, it becomes nine V squared and the height is gonna be nine times of the original height. Let's say original height is H naught, then it's gonna be nine times H naught. Right? So that's why if you stack th uh, two balls and then the ball on the top will go up to a height nine times of the original height. So let's say if this is h, uh, this ball will go up to nine h. Okay? So this will go up to nine h. And if we stack three of them together, and you can do a similar calculation. Oh, uh, there's a really small one on the top. Uh, let's say this is 3v and v. So th the same process, right? So this before clearing, before this is still going up, that's uh, already going down. And uh, this is not going up. And after clearing, this will become 7v. After. Okay. Why is that? Before, v relative absolute value is negative v minus 3v absolute value 4v v relative for v after 
B relative is 7B minus 3B equals to 4B as well, right? So after clearing, it becomes, has to have a speed of a 7B, okay? So that's why it will go up to a height of a 49 of the original height since 7 squared is 49, okay? Uh, sorry about the mass, I should have um, made more space for this part. But anyway, hopefully this makes sense. Um, now, I can also tell you for if you stack four balls, it's going to have gain a velocity of 15V of the initial uh, velocity. In fact, uh, I can show you the pattern. So if we have only one ball, and then after clearing, remember it's elastic clearing, no energy momentum loss. So if you drop one ball from a certain height, uh, it gains speed V before uh, clearing, it'll have the speed V after clearing. Okay? And we showed if you have two balls stacked uh, together here, you gain a velocity of 3v. Three balls, you gain a velocity of 7v. Uh, we show that here, right? 7v. And four, I can tell you it's uh, 15v. Five, and 31v. Can you see a pattern? Okay. Between V, 3B, 7B, 15B, 13B. Okay. Some of you may have spotted that, for example, if you times 3 by 2 plus 1, you get 7. Right. And if you times 7 by 2 plus 1, you get 15. 15 times by 2 plus 1, you get 31. Right. So you can derive a sequence where a n equals to two times the term in front of it plus v right and with a1 being v double check a1 is v that means according to this equation a2 is 2a1 plus v and being 2 right and then a1 is v, 2v plus v, 3v, which is our a2 here, 3v, okay? In fact, let me show you the table here. Let's say if we stack, if there is only one ball, let me show the table here. Uh, just one ball, the velocity is V, and the height is just the initial height. So it'll go back to the initial height. If you stack two balls together, the ball on the top, the speed is going to become 3V. And the height is going to go to 9 original height. Three of them, 7v and 49 original height. Four, stack four balls together. The ball on the top will gain a speed of 15v and will have a height of 225 times. Right, 15 squared, 225. And then five, we have 31. 31 V. 31 is, wait, nine, 30. Nine, 61. Original height. Okay, double check, yes. Okay, uh, let's just do six. 
uh, it can continue forever right but for now let's just do six uh six and you have so according to this uh sequence right six a6 equals to 2a5 plus v and a5 is 31 so 2 times 31 v plus v a6 is 63 v okay so this is 63 v and you have 39 69 h naught so if you stack six balls together the ball on the top can go up to the height that's almost a 4,000 times of the initial height. Okay. What that what does that mean? I'm gonna give you a more visualized representation. So let's say you drop a stack of six balls from 10 meter high. And uh, let's say you have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And the one uh, below is a lot heavier than the one on the top, right? So you drop them from 10 meter high. This ball on the top, this one, after rebound, it can go up to a height that's almost 40,000 meters, right? Uh, 39 to be exact, 30. 9,690 meters. This much times 10, right? So which is 39,690 meters. Uh, this is about the height of a stratosphere where airplane flies, right? So it can potentially hit an airplane but you're only dropping them from 10 meter height initially, and there are only six of them, right? So you can see um, this amazing phenomenon and uh, due to elastic collision and um, momentum transfer during elastic collision, okay? And how is this related to supernova? Uh, in fact, let me draw uh, supernova. Supernova, uh, one common type of supernova is a dying star, right? So in a dying star, the fusion reaction uh, in the core uh, stopped. So um, there is no, uh, like, not no pressure, but pressure low greatly lowers near the core, so the matter in the supernova start to collapse, or what we call implode. And uh, the weight distribution of supernova is closer to the core, the matter is heavier because it's denser. And uh, further away from it, it becomes lighter. Okay, so it's sort of like that. Um, uh, draw a few directions right so again I'm using the size to represent the the, the mass of the matter the bigger the size the heavier it is okay. so it's sort of like that and they start to implode collapse onto the core so literally like Thousand, hundreds, thousands of balls uh, being dropped to the ground, being dropped to the core. And as they implode, there's a lot of heat pressure generated. And eventually, in fact, they come down to a neutron level. Um, eventually, when there's enough heat and pressure, explosion is gonna happen so they're gonna rebound basically uh, let me use a different color they're gonna rebound oh. so after implosion explosion will happen 
So this is literally like a stack of balls being dropped and then they rebound. And you can imagine with six of them, they can go up to uh, 4,000 times of the initial height. And you have hundreds, thousands of them dropped, then rebound. How far can those top layer matter go? You can imagine. In fact, they can reach a velocity of uh, about uh, 13 kilometers per second. And if you want to uh, wrap your brain around uh, how high this speed is, you can imagine um, the escape velocity of the Earth. The escape velocity of the Earth is uh, 11.2 kilometers per second. This is escape velocity of Earth. Uh, what does this mean, escape velocity? It means, for example, if you throw a rock at this speed, it can escape from the gravitational pull of the Earth and out into the solar system. That's how fast that is. And this ball, not ball actually matter, it has a greater speed than that. And then you can imagine how far it can go. Hundreds, thousands of light years easily. Okay, So that's why supernova is one of the greatest explosion in the universe. Uh, it's due to this transfer of momentum and uh, the matter jettisoned by supernova can go a long way. Okay. All right, so this goes to show you even the demo we did is pretty simple. The, the underlying physics is profound. It can actually be tied into with one of the most marvelous phenomena in the universe, supernova. All right, hope you enjoyed the video and make sure you check part three for those of you who are interested, which uh, I showed how to prove the relative, the magnitude of the relative velocity between the two objects stay the same, which is basically all the following derivations uh, we showed is based on.